Off Ambrose Light, a Navy tug brings the President's personal representative aboard, Rear Admiral Hyman Rickover, father of the atomic submarine, who will share in the all-out greeting New York gives the pioneering sub. It's a rainy day, but that's no deterrent to the harbor welcome in traditional style. The salute of hundreds of vessels, coast guard cutters, fireboats, launches, tugs, and small craft, escorting the sleek sub upriver from the Narrows along the Manhattan waterfront to the cheers and admiration of the city. Then it's back to the lower harbor again and around the battery to berth at Brooklyn Navy Yard. Her arrival after her historic North Pole transit and her six and a half day underseas crossing of the Atlantic is a memorable one. A special occasion made all the happier for the crew by the presence at dockside of their families. For 60 Navy wives, it's the first reunion with their far-traveling husbands since April. Commander William Anderson, skipper of the Nautilus, and Admiral Rickover share the spotlight. To our atomic submariners, the glory of the recent feats that reassert the Navy's leadership in the contest for supremacy under the sea. The Navy reveals a major new advance in anti-submarine warfare, the new hunter-killer team of destroyer and helicopter. The copter carries new homing torpedoes, that will guide themselves to a target. In this test aboard the destroyer Mitcher off the Rhode Island coast, the copter is the French-designed Alouette, a turbine engine job that burns the same diesel fuel as the destroyer. Formerly, when a destroyer's long-range radar or sonar picked up a target, the ship had to close to depth charge range. Now, the copter does the killing as far away as the horizon, reducing the sea chase by long hours. The team of helicopter and destroyer, says the Navy, may be the greatest breakthrough in anti-submarine warfare since the fight against the German U-boats. A long stride towards meeting the menace of Russia's huge undersea fleet. The first jet transport to go into service with the United States airline makes its hopeful debut at New York's Idlewild Field, arriving from Puerto Rico. Till now, only two foreign jet transports have been permitted the use of the international terminal. Others have been barred for excessive noise. The Boeing Stratojet has been fitted with new noise suppressors. And a month of tests lies ahead. In that time, she will shuttle between New York and Puerto Rico on cargo flights. If it passes the noise test, look for daily jet flights to Paris and London. Seven hours across the Atlantic. <laughs> 